Hey guys, I'm John with Legacy Woodworking Machinery, and the most common question I get asked, and even got asked that today, was how do I process my sheet goods? We've looked at a couple softwares, we're going to look at one more, Cabinet Sense. It's presented by Michael Samarza. Let's take a watch. Hi, I'm Michael Samarza with West Oak Studios. And today I'm going to show you a short video, a demonstration of using my favorite SketchUp extension called Cabinet Sense. Been a cabinet maker for a long time and looked for the perfect software, and this turned out to be just what I like uh, using with my favorite um, CAD software, which is SketchUp. So we're going to start here uh, doing this small job. We're just going to demonstrate how we use SketchUp in putting a job together. So what you see here is a couple of walls uh, that are part of a kitchen remodel that I did recently. And uh, we put the window in place. We have a short wall here below that is for a peninsula that's going to come out. So let's start with that. And what I want to show you at the beginning here is that we have a library of components to work with. And in our library, we can have as many components as we want. Those components can reflect our own uh, individual building style. It can be frameless cabinetry, face frame cabinetry, uh, combination cabinetry, whatever we want to do as we uh, build cabinets on our, uh, from our company. So I'm going to remove this off screen though just to make it a little bit more efficient and start uh, selecting these components to build out this job. First thing I'm going to do is take an, a, a panel. And that panel is going to terminate here at the end of where my job is going to, or where this peninsula is going to end, in that place. Next thing I'll do is I do cabinetry with detached toe kicks. So I'm going to put a toe kick in here, similar to the kind that I would build. We'll take and we'll move this over to the right, into the corner. Using a scale tool, I can grab the scale handle and pull it right down to this panel. And now if I want it to be more realistic, I can put it into edit mode, grab this partition, and then using the fill tool, I can add how many partitions I want, say seven. And there we have it. Next thing I'll do is grab a blind corner cabinet. That's the way I'm gonna start in this corner. and bring this blind corner cabinet into place. And then we'll pull it away from the wall a little bit. And then I'm going to move it up against the wall. Next thing I'll do is I'm going to bring out a stack of drawers. I think that's what would fit next in this design. We'll bring out our drawer bank here. And then I'm thinking that what I would like is, I think I want another uh, set of drawers on the other end and maybe something in between. But what I'd like them to be is I want them to have uh, symmetry all the same size. And so what I'll do is, again, I'm going to use that fill tool. It's often used in cabinet sets. It tells us that it thinks that we should maybe use four copies. That's perfect. That's what I'm thinking too. So click on OK. And it's going to adjust the size of these cabinets so that we have four cabinets that fit and fill in this space. Now again, because that would be a little monotonous, I'm going to grab this one of these center cabinets, delete it, and this center cabinet, and delete it. Now I can take uh, something that I'm really thinking about putting in between, and that is going to have a couple of doors, maybe some pullouts uh, inside, and I'll bring that into this opening as well. Okay, we'll just click that into place. Cabinet sends self-aligning, so it automatically aligned it right to that cabinet. And again, I'm going to go to the fill tool, take that fill tool, and it says this time I think we should fill to the right with just one copy of this cabinet. Clicking on OK. And there we go, it's filled the opening. And if we want to take a quick look just inside to see what we've done, we can see that we do have those pullouts indeed. 
and uh, we have our drawers. I can remove drawer fronts separately and take a look and just see that what I have. And um, so that takes care of that. Now we're going to go up above here and the designer said that she would like to see maybe a china cabinet up here. And so I'm going to grab a china cabinet that I have in my library. This china cabinet is actually a face frame cabinet. So we'll pull this into our job. Next, I want to dress this off with a finished end panel here. So we'll grab the end panel and bring it into the job. Now I have the alignment turned off on this panel because I want to place it in a particular way. So I'm grabbing it by this upper corner and I'm actually overlapping the face frame because I'm going to miter this corner when it actually gets built. And so this way I can actually see the sizes of these parts and know exactly how I'm going to build them. I will grab this again, this time from this outside edge, click on it, tap on my control key, which duplicates this panel, bring it down to this end, and click again. So now I have both of these panels in place on this cabinet. Lastly, I think I'd like to put some corbels under this cabinet. I'm putting it in x-ray mode to make that easier to do. I'll grab a, cor a corbel, and you can download corbels, design corbels by hand exactly like what you would like to make. So I'm going to click and place that corbel, grabbing it in the back left hand corner, and then I'm just going to go and place it underneath the bottom shelf here. I'll go to the other side and grab it on this corner. And using that control move control key, I can copy this, bring it over to the other end, and do the same thing. I'm just going to click on the inside of this end. We'll bring it back out of x-ray mode, and there we have it. Okay, lastly, we're going to dress this off with a crown treatment. So I'm going to use another extension that I really like, and that's called Profile Builder. In Profile Builder, I have built crowns that match the exact crown that I'm going to use for this job. And this is what this crown here represents. So I'm going to select that crown. I can go ahead and click on the icon to install it. And now just clicking here, click on that corner, and on this corner, and on that corner. Doesn't get much easier, and I already have now a finished look of what I want that cabinet to look like. Now I can also uh, select a toe kick skin for the bottom underneath there. So I'm going to select this right here. And click on that end. And come down to the end and click again. And there we go. Okay, and that finishes off a short demonstration of how we can build a bank of cabinets very quickly in cabinet sense. Now previously I had modeled this entire job, and so we'll take a look at how the rest of this came together. And you can see that, you know, not only can we uh, place these cabinets, we can place panels on the back of the cabinets, countertops exactly that match the countertops that are specified for this job. Uh, we have appliances. Um, other details in this job can be easily placed using cabinet sense. A custom fireplace hearth. Uh, it's also a lot of fun to be able to design to fit an individual project. Here on this wall, we have uh, a pantry, and these doors cover the refrigeration units. We have the ability, since these are dynamic components, we can interact with these components. So we use this tool, and we can open up these cabinets and show what our pantry is going to look like. Um, these drawers slide out as well. And if these look a little unusual or unique to you, these are Legra box drawers, and so therefore the sides are part of a system drawer, and therefore they don't show in the drawing. 
but we can use any kind of drawer guides that we want. We can change these drawer guides really in just one click by going over here to our drawer tool and then changing out these drawers. So it's very simple to do. All of the manufacturer specs are gonna be part of that drawer that we put in. So they're gonna change fluidly as we go from one drawer to another. And that's also the same for handles. I often design a job just with the default handles and then afterwards I can go and change them to whatever I want to once I get a, a clearer idea of how that job is gonna finish off. And so there you have it. This job now is ready to export and machine. And so let's take just a quick look at what that might look like. We go to the dashboard. We're gonna export only the CNC machining at this time. Click on run. And we are through. CabinetSense gives us uh, some information about the depths of our dados and drills just as a reminder of uh, what was exported. So now we'll open up Aspire. In Aspire, I like to use a gadget to bring in my DXF parts for the nest. So we use DXF batch processor. And we'll go look for that export that we just did. And we're going to nest the three quarter inch uh, thick parts to begin with. We'll be cutting in three quarter inch melamine. We have different parameters that can be set based upon, you know, the material size that you're using, material thickness, and uh, those kind of uh, in, that kind of information. We're going to be working off the bottom of the sheet, so at the top of the spoiler board, um, to do this process. And this is certainly not all the job, but it made it a little easier just to get a view of what this looks like when we export it and when we nest these parts. So here you can see on sheet number two, we have some of the parts that are going to be fabricated. I print on these parts the number where it goes uh, I, so that it's easy to assemble. And you can see the other machining here too for adjustable shelves, hinges for instance, and, and other things that may be used in our manufacturing. Okay, and once we apply these tool paths to this job, for instance, we can also see we can do kind of a virtual test of how this is going to machine. So if I open up uh, our icon here to look at the previewing of the toolpaths, we'll reset this and then we'll run the visible toolpaths. Uh, I'm going to slow it down maybe just a tad and you can see what it looks like. You know, first we mark the parts, we drill the parts, we're doing mortises for the blind dados, uh, maybe a, a dado for the back and uh, so on and so forth. And uh, we're doing a little rough cutting and then we'll finish up with our final pass uh, to cut out the parts at the very end of the process. You can take a look at some of the uh, finished pictures. That is the end of this short demonstration and I hope that it was helpful and useful. You can also, uh, if you'd like, go to my website, uh, the westoakstudios.com website, and you can schedule there uh, for a demo appointment. Um, there's also other contact information. Email me. You can call me and I'm happy to talk to you about your project. Um, I'm working with many different people, uh, actually lucky enough all over the country to help with the design of their projects. So please reach out, happy to help you.